Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and I'm here coming to you from my dining room, uh, which as uh, most Americans have found during the uh, COVID pandemic has become the office of choice. As I walk around my neighborhood at night, I can see computers set up on, uh, usually multi-screen computers set up on the dining room tables in almost every time I pass. I don't actually do my work in here. Um, this is uh, just uh, really used for eating, usually. But uh, I've been using this as uh, my official YouTube filming area, so I've, I've just kind of kept it going. Uh, but anyway, greetings. I hope everybody is doing well. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about Italian hole cuts today. And um, so I'm going to do a shoe battle consisting of two very, very nice and very well-made shoes. Uh, the first one is an Enzo um, hole cut. Um, has a medallion. It's on the 964 last. Uh, one of my favorite hole cuts. Um, uh, you can see it's, uh, this is a custom patina, but it's got some very nice sole work with fiddleback waist, beautiful small heel. Just a very nice, very stylish, very clean shoe. Um, and then I'm going to compare it to this, which is a Meccarello, uh, excuse me, a Meccariello. I'm going to get the pronunciation right. I apologize to Antonio. Um, and this is a, what I think is very similar to the model of the Libertor, but this is St. Martin's and this is made uh, for uh, Y of Yosol um, uh, by Meccariello. And so I uh, wanted to have this here. Now this is also very clean with also a very nice fiddle back waist, very tight sole, uh, narrow waist, and just a beautiful hole cut. Now this one is not a custom patina, but uh, Antonio actually did this in a museum calf uh, himself, rather than buying a museum calf. Um, he does the patinas by hand. So uh, both the Enzo and the Meccariello are um, hand welted shoes. Uh, they're both um, hand welted and, and hand lasted um, and uh, just have a great amount of detail. So. Here you can see the fudging line goes along the uh, welt there. And uh, then you look at this one and you can see the same. Okay. And actually, I think if you look at the light just right, you can see that this is fudging. And sorry, the light on this camera is not exactly great. I'm gonna have to do something about that, but there is fudging here. It's a lot more subtle on this particular boot, or excuse me, shoe, uh, than it is on, on, the, uh, on the other. And I think that's because it's just done differently, probably with a different tool. So I'm going to uh, attempt to show them both at once here. And if you look at the edges, you can see A, the AM is a little bit tighter to the sole, so it's a little bit more difficult to see. But then also, um, it's just, it's a consistent pattern, but it's actually kind of right at the edge there, where here is a very, very fine pattern, and it's very different from the uh, stitching. I think what Macariello is doing is he is using the fudging to hide the top stitch of his hand um, welt that he does on the shoe so that it's almost invisible and you can't tell where it is. That is a very good, very bespoke practice where what Enzo is doing, um, Enzo Bonafe, is um, doing the, uh, the very, very fine to add a pattern to the sole. So that, so, and it's on the top of the well. So uh, just a different way of doing it, um, both very well done. We look at the soles. You can see that this has a very narrow waist, um, but it does not have a notch where the waist is actually narrower than the heel where if you look at the Macariello, it does have that notch, although it's very subtle. You can see that notch. And if you look here, that heel is very close in size. There, there isn't a lot of difference. Now the sole work, when you look at the, the sole work on the Macariello versus the, um, uh, the waist on the Macariello versus the Enzo, the waist is narrower. So this part here, right there, 
a very different shape. So it just has a little bit more concaveness there. Not a lot, but enough. And I think that that is going to give a little bit more arch support and be a nicer feel. They both have a beautiful fiddleback. Um, the AM also has these beautiful little pattern that he put into the sole. And I think that this is with one of those wheels, but this is just a, another example of specific handwork that he does in order to tie it in. Now they've got nails across the top here. And here I put on a Lulu tip. I didn't put it on, I had somebody put it on. The, the patina artist who is Mr. Renworks um, put that on for me. So um, really, really classic. So let's look at the uppers. Okay? Um, both very, very soft. Um, the, the feel of these is incredible, okay? Um, but as you, as you feel the, the upper and you look at the amount of wrinkling that happens after wear, very, very minor. Look at these, also very, very soft. This is yolk calf. I don't remember the name of the, the calf that they use there. And you can see there's some very, very small micro creasing there, uh, but nothing, nothing to write home about. And when you look at the last shape, of each of these shoes, it is incredibly similar, but you'll see that the Mecca is a little bit more of a round uh, uh, toe, and this has more of a chisel toe, okay? But when you look at the shape this way, okay, they both have a really, really good rise. The Enzo is much sharper, which kind of goes with the chisel last, okay? Now you'll notice also the soles are very different. The soles on this are about half the width of the soles here. And that's because Macariello carves out this waist to be like a single sole. And then here it's a double sole. And I really feel like that's a, a really good classic differentiator and something that makes the shoe, um, you know, really, really worthwhile. Now I talk about the lining on a lot of shoes and the lining on the Macariello is very, very soft. Um, it's almost as soft as the upper. Um, and when I do the same uh, with the Enzo, it is not as soft, but it's very soft. So um, certainly not something that I would take away from the Enzo for, uh, but um, it is definitely a marked difference. So when in, term, in terms of quality, in terms of, uh, you know, I think the quality of these, they're both handmade, they're both made by masters. I feel like they're they're both just beautiful shoes. I'm not gonna say that there's a significant difference in quality. Um, the only things that I can look at in terms of differentiating um, are the last, and obviously that's a choice. And I prefer the chisel toe a little bit more. I prefer the sharp rise on the edges of the toes like you have right here. I like that where it just pops up there and it just looks like a little line. I think that that's a, a, a solid design now. This is great, okay, take a look at that. This is a world-class shoe. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. This is also planar, right? Because it has no medallion. It has no medallion, so the shoe has to stand completely on its own with no adornation. And I think it does a great job with that. So uh, very good. I love the notch here on the sides a little bit better. And I love the detail that's done in this curve. Of course, this has the curve but it doesn't have that detail carved into it and it doesn't have the notch and it's not quite as narrow right here. The angle of this arch is just not quite as defined as it is right here. So again, very, very close, uh, but um, I'm going to have to declare the Mecariello the winner. So this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. I hope you found that entertaining and thanks for watching.